Whew. It's just clear ice on here. Oh. I can hardly walk. lost it there. Oh, that was just complete black ice. That was close. Alright, this is the area that's, oh shoot, it's slippery. Whoa, I'm sliding. This is the area that generally gets really icy and wet when it's stormy out. I can't leave. Whew. It's just clear ice on here. Oh. I can hardly walk. Wow. Okay. Oh, oh so slippery. Can't walk. But I don't want to get dust. Whoa. Oh, shoot. I can't. All right. It's fine now, but I have never seen ice that bad. All right, so we made it back from our run, and uh, today, with my run commute home, I have cleared 100 miles in these Saucony Ride 10 GTX. So I wanted to do just a quick update video on how they're doing. Overall, the shoes are handling and holding up great. Um, the first thing I noticed when I first got the shoes um, is that the treads on the bottom were really deep, and again, this area is where my foot strikes uh, when I go running, and this is the area that usually wears out and tells me that I need to get new shoes. Taking a very close look at it, I can tell right down here, there's a little bit of wear starting to happen, and I can see that, um, again, this is the spot uh, where the shoes are gonna wear down, and uh, that's gonna be the spot where I'll know that I need to replace these shoes. But I'm at 108, so I guess today's even before today's run, which was about seven miles, I was over 100 miles, but I'm at 108 miles right now. I've had the shoes for, the first run was over like Martin Luther King Day uh, weekend. So it's been about 15 days with the shoes, uh, 100 miles. Seems like that's not right. I think that's it, that is it. I did have a 20 miler over the weekend um, and I ran a half marathon the week before that. So that, adds a whole bunch of miles in there. Um, the backs of the shoes are almost pristine because I don't think I'm hitting very much on the heels on these shoes. Um, so I do think my foot is striking a little bit differently in these uh, compared to the Nike Zoom Pegasus that I normally run in. Uh, correction uh, from the earlier video that I made. These are an eight millimeter drop, um, not a four millimeter drop. It's the Canvaras that are the four millimeter. Overall, I still really love this shoe. Um, after 100 miles, I don't feel like I've lost any of the, the cushioning that's in it. I've even switched back uh, this over the last weekend um, between running in this shoe, the Ride 10 GTX, and the Zoom Pegasus 34 Shield, just to get uh, a feel for it and also just to rest the shoes a little bit. I think I'm gonna start doing that more, having kind of two pairs of shoes that I rotate between. I think that's gonna help longevity and also with my feet. Putting these back on uh, this morning, uh, or this afternoon for my run, uh, everything felt felt really great. The thing that I will notice about this shoe, and I don't think it's gonna change now that I'm 100 miles in, is that the heel always just seemed really kind of fat and bloated. And I don't wanna feel like my heel or any part of my foot is loose on this shoe, but I definitely feel like sometimes there's two shoes, right? So like when I'm, sometimes, it's usually not when I'm running, it's more like when I'm wearing this shoe and it's on or I'm walking, a lot of the times if I'm run commuting home in the afternoon, I'm wearing these shoes to commute in in the morning uh, for daycare uh, drop off. And it feels like 
there's the bottom of the shoe, which is really solid, and the top of the shoe just kind of like sit, like tectonic <laughs> movement, like plates that are moving on top of each other. So it feels like it's like two different shoes. Uh, maybe it's because I'm used to the Zoom Pegasus 34s, and those are extremely snug on the foot with the Flywire system and all the other stuff that Nike has going for it. I've learned that those advances are not just marketing speak. It feels super snug on your foot. It feels like it's a part of your foot. I don't get the same sensation here. Once I start running, all that worry kind of goes away, uh, but it is something that I've noticed. It looks really roomy in the heel. Like every time I see footage of my, myself running, it feels like this is just a fat heel, uh, kind of contributing to my concern that this is an old guy shoe, and maybe it is, but I do love it. The top feels really loose. Um, but again, when I'm running, it's not a concern, but just something I think to get used to. Maybe that's how Saucony's are. This is my first pair of Saucony's that I've ever run in. The one time that I did run into an actual problem with the shoe when I was running, I don't think it was a problem with this shoe. I think any shoe would have had a problem with it. I was running along the lakefront uh, trail, the same spot today where I had to stop and I couldn't even stand still because the ice was so slick that there was a slight incline where I was standing and I just kept moving a little bit. That same area, uh, about a week ago, I was running and the waves came crashing over all the way up from kind of where the shoreline is, all the way up to the breaker wall, uh, which is about 40 or 50 feet. And the cold water came and smashed against the breaker wall and I was in water kind of halfway up to my shin. So water just got all in this shoe, freezing cold water, got all in this shoe and both of my feet got really, really wet. When I did that, that's when I like really felt like the kind of two shoe thing that's going on with this shoe. Um, the right foot didn't get it quite as bad. And so after maybe about a mile of running, I felt like most of the moisture and kind of the, the effect of running through the lake uh, had kind of worn off. But this shoe, that didn't go away until like the, the next time I put them on the following day. And so this shoe got the worst of it. And I definitely felt like I was running on on a sh like a platform that was tied to my foot, which I guess that's what a shoe is, right? But um, it didn't feel like a shoe. And kind of ever since then, I've kind of ha maybe it's mental, or maybe it's exacerbating something that I was always feeling is that it doesn't quite feel like a single shoe all the time. But again, I did run a half marathon in these. Um, I smashed my PR by nine minutes in these shoes, so I I am not upset at the shoe at all. I love this shoe um, and I think it's uh, been working out great. And I'm hoping to get at least another 150, which would put me at about 250, 260 miles on, on it. If I can get to 300, that would make me really happy. But that being said, uh, it is only January and I'm already starting to really look forward to uh, some of the spring and summer shoes that are gonna start coming out. So these, uh, G Gore-Tex shoes or like the Shield ver variety of shoes are a little bit less interesting for me to run in right now. I'm just trying to get all the mileage out of them that I can before it gets too hot to wear these, uh, which can be uh, in Chicago. It could be uh, in a week, could be in four months. So who, who really knows? But this is the shoe, the Saucony Ride 10 GTX after 100 miles. Looks great, feels great. Definitely different than the Nike Zoom Pegasus 34, which is kind of my only main comparison point, but solid shoe, great for longer distance, uh, great for some speed work as well. Uh, I've been running the fastest I've ever run in, in this shoe. I don't know that it's necessarily because of this shoe, but it's certainly not slowing me down at all. Yo, what's going on?